you have the will then only you can actually you know implement it and you can do it all the challenges in your stride then only you can motivate your students you know it gives you a sense of accomplishment you know when you are writing it your thoughts hello and a very warm welcome to great principles i'm your host seema choria and today we are discussing something very very crucial in this fast paced world having academic knowledge alone is not enough for student to succeed in their personal as well as professional lives life skills are essential tools that can help students navigate through the challenges of everyday life build resilience and enhance their overall well being in this session we will explore the various life skills that students need to develop and how these life skills can be integrated to their academic curriculum so let's dive in and discover the importance of life skills for students and to discuss this we have our very expert educator of the day ms ritu seth she is vice principal of gurugram global heights school gurugram welcome to great principles ma'am we are very very honored to have you with us today thank you ma'am uh, my pleasure to be the part of this uh, you know particular initiative which you have already taken and i'm very happy and thank you to uh, thank you to all of you yes we are equally excited ma'am to understand uh, how life skills we all know that life skill is something very very crucial but you know integrating it with academic curriculum that is where we need expertise so today we will discuss more on that but before we dive into this uh, interesting topic let us understand a little more about ritu ma'am so ma'am what has been your educational journey like when did you start and what keeps you going in here you know some key moments of uh, rewards and some challenges of course because that's what life is yes life is all about challenges only ma'am but uh, how like you know being an educator we have taken it up so i would like to just uh, tell that uh, you know i started my career with uh, dps mathra road i mean you know that's the core school of delhi uh, way back in 1989 so it's been like kind of uh, more than uh, 28 29 years ma'am in this particular industry so there i was like i joined as a tgt science and then uh, later on uh, some other schools after i got married and uh, then in, uh, we relocated here in gurugram so uh, you know for past 24 years like you know it's been there and uh, i have not looked back i have worked with the only not only with cbsc school i have worked with ib schools and i'm well aware of how to integrate the progressive methodologies with cbsc curriculum because these days even nep 2020 talks all about this integration but we were actually practicing it in my previous school uh, ridge valley sun city kunskap school and, and uh, dps sector 45 for 9 years where i worked in so uh, you know we have actually uh, you know kind of adopted all these progressive methodologies all these life skills and uh, you know social skills emotional skills we have tried to you know kind of uh, inculcate in our day to day life uh, with our students so that they can be like kind of a responsible they can grow into a responsible global citizen so that's uh, about me and uh, you know but uh, yeah that's that's about me great so uh, you have experience in working into various different kind of boards in our country ma'am so yeah. you know i would like to understand from you as a parent you know how should we take this decision that which board is best suited for my child uh all right ma'am the thing is that see all boards whether it's cambridge whether it's icsc board whether it's ib or cbsc these days everybody is just uh, you know kind of the things which are given to us as a curriculum how you design it the basic thing is that all schools are trying to just outdo each other but in terms of boards i mean you can take up any book you know and then how you are integrating how you are uh, you know reaching to the level of the child to make him understand what it is given over there that is more important so i'll not get into all that nitty gritty that which one is better if in cbsc also if you are integrating all your curriculum uh, depending and if it is a differentiated curriculum which is, is suiting to everybody see one shoe doesn't fit all so we cannot say okay this particular strategy is working with my class it might not work with some other children it might not work with some other section so we give that kind of freedom and cbsc allows that you know uh, these days you can take see education is all about learning from each other how others are doing it differently 
you know how uh, you know your intentions are correct for that way to make your children understand what are you trying to explain it to them or if they are trying out their hands or there are too many things people just try to say that okay we are inculcating this that mm -hmm. you know it has to be the atmosphere has to be built up in that particular school so that everybody is happy everybody is adapting that kind of this thing then only we can go ahead uh, whether we are a cbse teacher or whether we are cambridge or whether we are any board teacher that doesn't make any difference in whichever school you are working whether it's a branded school or a public school or a government school all of us being educationist can come forward and our intention is going to take our children far uh, not anything else so we really have to be passionate we should be here not by just by the choice it ha it has to be by choice not by just you know kind of compulsion okay that you are a lady and you have to go and you know because you would get time for your own family no this is a very demanding job job and uh, you have to really you know uh, get into this because it's a very very responsible uh, kind of industry which we are in because we are dealing with children whom we are molding every day and they are going to be the future of our country and of our world and if we talk about uh, like this g20 summit which says what they've put them become so if we talk about that then this uh, the across the globe everybody is uh, you know all of us are like one family a big family then only if we have this kind of mindset then only we can impart it to our students it it gets circulate from us only ma'am no one else and not from the books unless we are that kind of tools like you know very true very true ma'am very very wonderfully answered i must say because you know th this is a dilemma in front of everyone as a parent the first thing you decide is which board i want to go for then you decide now which school which is in the vicinity but ma'am today you made it very very clear that it's not the board or the infrastructure that really makes a school mm. great it's the passionate people behind them the management the teachers because they yes. are the one who have to execute mm. everything you know many a times as parents you what have we the will, if you have the will then only you can actually you know implement it and you can do it otherwise if you yes. don't have it nobody can force you it has to come from within that i am here to make some difference and come what may you have to take all the challenges in your stride then only you can motivate your students if unless until you are thinking that okay it's 9 to 5 or 8 to 4 job is not going to help us i mean unless yes. until you are you are the passionate one the kind of motivator and you can make everybody to go and run around then only it will be like otherwise we will not be able to achieve our goals which we have set for ourselves and for our students too Absolutely. yes So, yeah. my dear parents, I think another thing which can help you selecting the right school is talking to the parents and the students, of course. That how do they mm -hmm. feel being a part of the school? I think that would be the best review that you can get, and how they are progressing. The parents are the best ambassador to talk about the school, so that would really, really help you to select the right school for your child. So, moving ahead in our conversations, ma'am, we started our show session. based on life skills so and here ma'am my biggest question is we all talk about life skills but how do you integrate it with school curriculum what are some of the tips that you would like to share with the educators and also with the parents you know that these days we expect a lot lot from schools but as a parents we somewhere fail that you know we also have equal responsibility to develop that kind of atmosphere so how can school and parents work in partnership in developing these life skills uh yes ma'am very i mean you know well uh, this question i mean well said you had just said that that uh, how we integrate it uh, in our curriculum or how do we so the thing is that first we have to be first thing is that the educator has to be uh, that knowledgeable who knows how to i mean you know tackle her children and what is their need so first is that we have to identify and how we are going to inculcate in our students the so first you have to be a role model if you're an educator you have to be a role model for your students i mean you just can't think that okay students are going to just see that and uh, they are going to follow it they are going to follow your footsteps only because you are there in the school and same goes at the home atmosphere also and we just do a uh, counselor parents too that you know whatever like kind of atmosphere we are giving in the school and what you are doing it over there so it has to be very very well planned and so that they don't even get to know that they are being exposed to that kind of environment but that comes automatically if i talk about the other countries mom school i mean you know if we talk about japan's schools you know they just do teach all these life skills 
all these kind of things the table manners how do women I they have to take their food and they have to i mean clean up their classrooms where in in our country we don't do that we don't teach them but in my school i make sure that the teachers are teaching them the how to take care of themselves first i'm talking about the pre primary you know how to they can actually if they are eating something and then they have to i mean clean up their workplace or even for uh, elder students also like you know they have they should know how to take responsibility of their own actions but for that it it is a gradual process see these life skills cannot be taught in one day and there is a no set curriculum for that for that you have to be practicing it every day without even uh, you know looking at there is no curriculum uh, for this right so whether we are i mean conducting a circle time activity for our uh, junior sections wherein the teacher if somebody is absent for two days the teacher is uh, supposed to be asking that child so that the child who is very submissive who doesn't come forward will not share it maybe in the class because he is very shy or she is very shy the teacher should know okay child why were you absent what happened why you are upset you know and we do have like you know these kind of circle time activities wherein i mean they can actually narrate a story also or they sometimes you know uh, in our uh, kindergarten i mean teachers i mean students they come up forward themselves and they cook up their stories and where is some moral values also there because the teacher is being like kind of telling them all this so every a uh, minute of our school and uh, you know kind of hours is well designed one has to do that that okay everything whatever you are doing it has to be well designed and uh, well executed so unless until you plan it beforehand that what children should not get to know that we are teaching but we are teaching in our own way right so that they it should not be kind of a burden okay ma'am would come she would narrate a story she would tell a moral value no they are not going to learn it by that but unless until you are making is as per their level uh, you know and uh, then only they would be able to understand what are we trying to tell them then only they can practice it that is more important yeah, yeah. right absolutely ma'am so uh, you know ma'am uh, in schools as you mentioned that it's how you integrate it so uh, would what would be your suggestion for some time kind of practical exposure outside the school building for the students you know taking them for industrial visits and uh giving them some life situations wherein mm -hmm. they have to make so some we, we we do that we do that also ma'am and not only the circle time activities there are too many activities in the sports ground i mean you know how they are playing how they are they should be these days the need of the hour is compassion and to reflect upon oneself so in my school i mean the all the children i mean we we have yoga we have meditation classes we have our reflection a reflective session also wherein everybody i mean the class teacher goes over there and before they go home i mean for the before the dispersal of my school they are supposed to be the 15 minutes again with the class teacher uh you know because she is like kind of a mother teacher for them to whom they can actually you know go and talk about it so that's a reflective so they are supposed to be writing even my uh, primary children they 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 write it that how did that particular day go so they do write about it okay i didn't like the math class or maybe the sports class was really wonderful or i like singing this particular you know so those kind of things and we read it and we get to know where the child is going and what was the thing which was upsetting him or her that day you know and they also know that okay i didn't do well in this particular test so maybe i have to make some strategy strategy you know to just to come up or to come forward along with that we take them the because interpersonal or intrapersonal skills unless until we give them that exposure will not we cannot build it so they have to observe the behavior of in others this thing also they go and uh, participate in other competitions or activities which happen around in the vicinity of other schools and how do they i mean you know uh, uh, put it up like their show or the events so we just give them the tax exposure along with that uh, the night camps and then the outside trips the excursion but these are all very very well planned and a uh, kind of thing uh, it's not only fun but along with that academics also go like suppose if somebody is teaching um, you know uh, in the, um, the science i mean in senior classes i'm talking about maybe microorganism like you know the cell structure and all that so along with that the art teacher uh, would bring up some some kind of which happened in my school uh, i mean the teacher uh, she brought the indefinite uh, shape of the cancer cells 
So the math teacher took up exponents at that point of time. The art teacher took some artists, Ferraris, whose um, I mean the cell, I mean kind of art was like an indefinite cell structure kind of a thing. So same kind of things. If you are enhancing in some way or which way, so um, children learn it by that. And along with that, the all other um, co-curricular activities, which has to happen to make them uh, responsible and a kind of a balanced person in life so that they can change um, and they can tackle the challenges which life throws when they go out of the school, which mostly uh, children, they do not, I mean, the genius one, they, they don't know how to take the failure. And some are like, they just go in their cocoon because they cannot handle that kind of challenge, which was, I mean, the life which throws it uh, to them because they have been uh, protected and they have been, you know, kind of, uh, you know, grew in the, that kind of protected environment in the school. So it has to be that kind of thing, which they can take up any challenges, whichever the kind of thing, and uh, they should be reflective upon to overcome from that particular uh, challenge. That's what we try to do. Yeah. Perfect, ma'am. And I think uh, ma'am has very rightly explained that how essential is life skills for preparing our children for facing the world, which is, you know, completely unpredictable. Especially with the yes. things like COVID happened with us, we cannot predict anything. So resilience, building all the life skills is very, very essential for our students. And uh, as ma'am said that they are doing their best to inculcate these life skills lessons along with curriculum, not focusing on a particular subject, rather than assuring that everything is taught in a manner which is fun, yet a child learns seeing the practical world. So wonderfully mm -hmm. explained, ma'am. So before, uh, you know, we wind up the session, we would like to go ahead with a rapid fire round. So, ma'am, in rapid fire round, you have to answer me in one word or a single sentence would also do. Okay. All right. All right. So, here goes my very first question to you. If not an educator, what, uh, in which profession you would have been? I would have been a doctor. Um, being a science person, I just wanted to be like that. And uh, I think that's also a very noble profession. Uh, that's why I wanted to be a doctor. So one had I not been me, but my mom was a teacher. So I always wanted to, because I got it like, you know, kind of in my blood only, you know, to impart that. Both ways knowledge. you were serving the nation and at one place yes. by saving and I other think place by shaping the life. Is serving the nation in whichever way, whichever field they are in. I mean, you know, and if you are true to your, this thing, your job, I think all the kind of this thing, but I wanted to be a doctor. If I had I thought not been uh, this thing, but this particular profession is uh, not by compulsion, it's by choice. Yeah. Right. Moving ahead to my next question. What is the one thing that you notice when you meet the person for the first time? Mm, all that, uh, how effectively they are communicating. All right. That is the first thing, the language skills. I mean, obviously. And then, uh, you know, uh, what kind of, uh, the, I mean, you know, um, the people who can talk deeply about something, I mean, and they can go in depth. So I want to see the depth in the person. All right. Yeah. Moving not the artificial, next. not the artificial one. Uh, you know. Right. Right. So, okay. Yeah. Moving ahead to my next question. Uh, what mm -hmm. are the activities that you take up in your recreational time? Uh, these days I read a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. more of philosophical books. Earlier, I used to read a lot of autobiographies. So mm -hmm. these days, uh, Dr. Deepak Chopra or Dr. <laughs> Devnath Patnayak and those kind of wherein like, you know, I get to know what spiritual, spiritual is doesn't mean uh, religious, being religious, but I'm, I'm a spiritual person. So I introspect myself. I introspect how did my day go? What I'd ask my children to do it. Same thing. I also, uh, you know, kind of do it at uh, before I retire and um, before I sleep. So that is the first thing that how was my behavior as a leader? Because I also have to introspect where I'm going wrong and where was something and how I can overcome or I can motivate my teachers to, uh, you know, achieve that particular goal, which uh, we aspire for as a school. Uh, you know, to make the difference in uh, our day-to-day uh, -day life of our children and as well as in the, it's a payback time now. What I feel at this age that I have learned mm -hmm. and I have got 
society so it's a payback time so we do i i always believed in outreach programs uh, and uh, same thing when i go and interact with my grade 10 though these days i don't teach them much but i make sure to go over there and to talk to them like you know and uh, what is happening and how it is going on so that's kind of a moral lecture and maybe they are also used to of mine like this is this yes ma'am great moving ahead to my next question are you a netizen yes or no mm yes yes i think we all are these days right so yeah you, you can't avoid it you can't yeah. avoid it yeah in this digital age do you think handwriting will is uh, writing by hand or handwriting is still essential uh yes ma'am uh, why i'm saying so uh see in our i mean they um, we make sure that these days though children are more tech savvy as compared to all of us even a 3 years old or a 4 years old who comes in a nursery and kg class i have seen them but uh, you know um, handwriting is also very important to express yourself they say that ma'am you can express by typing it also but no uh, you know they have to sit for 3 hours paper in our board examination and not only that you know it gives you a sense of accomplishment you know when you are writing it your thoughts i still pen down my thoughts or maybe if i read something in the book and if i have to i don't make sure that okay i have to open my laptop or maybe my phone and i have to write it all these words i make sure to write it in my diary you know we we do tell our children also so there is has to be very fine balance between these two things of course we can't neglect because it's going to be technology driven you know kind of uh, world outside but of course and writing also we do keep stress that you please write because unless until we make sure that they are writing they will not be able to write the examination that is our system in our country so we can't avoid it yeah right so moving ahead to my next question ma'am if you were to change one thing about current education system what would you change okay um only thing is that if we um you know a uh, kind of integrate more of uh, kind of compassionate that if we can build up more of compassion not only that uh, the stress uh, which i have seen children you know in uh, especially in board classes come what may uh, you know uh, we couldn't achieve to uh, you know uh, take them away that particular stress i have seen that you know automatically because that's our mindset of as parent as a teacher and as a school this thing that okay you have to because everybody you know schools uh, you know they want to publish their school results and all that rather than uh, going for that that the child might be a uh, very very uh, good in other uh, kind of uh, you know kind of uh, uh, areas so but uh, all all schools they do that so if we can i mean you know uh, take away that particular stress from our children and uh, if we can come up with some other kind of activities wherein they can they are allowed to take and uh, book before board examination whatever they want to pursue in their life that would be really great to you know we hear a lot these days about our beloved prime minister talking about pariksha pe charcha and telling aap chinta mat kariye bas pariksha dijiye but aisa hota ah, nahi yes and we made it in. sure that our children i mean heard uh, uh, our prime minister uh, mr modi that day and they were so happy so we yeah. we really have to i mean because that automatically comes to that from the environment that okay you are appearing in grade 10 board or 12 board and all that so so many expectations why do we adults i mean have expectations what we couldn't fill it up right even yeah. as a parent also have seen parents so we have to counsel parents also ma'am on this particular aspect very true ma'am so before we wind up the session i would like to ask you to give a closing note for us our aspiring educators a word of wisdom for them oh okay so for aspiring educators i would like to see first you should be taking interest in whatever field you have now you know chosen as a being a this thing educator uh you have to put yourself in children's shoes to understand them better subject knowledge you might be having all degrees but that is not going to help you when you are into this particular field and uh, especially being a teacher i have seen i mean a teacher who is just a graduate uh, with a bsc degree or maybe post graduate she might be a good teacher as compared to somebody who has done phd you know so please uh, this is not regarding the this thing and how you are uh, if you have that urge 
to keep learning throughout your life then be an educator otherwise uh, this is not the field to be in uh, unless until you keep updating yourself unless until you really feel for the society for the children for everything and whichever way whichever school we come from if we are making that bit of that difference so you don't need those kind of awards or something to give you some you know kind of okay recognition that comes automatically to you and if you are a happy person you know uh, ma'am when i started my career one of my principals said this to me and i was very very young and she was actually taking one staff meeting and she said that uh, girls uh, i want to say one thing to all of you that don't bring your home stress to school and don't take school stress to home and that is i want to say to all these aspiring educators that please these are two different things because we are dealing with such small children and your body language your everything if you have you are not in good mood it gets automatically percolates to them okay ma'am is not in good mood you might have your home stress so please don't bring it and uh, unless until you are compassionate and a learner a lifelong learner please this is uh, this is not the place to be in then wonderful so all you if you are really really passionate about it then you take up uh, you know teaching as your profession and if you aren't then please you know choose something else because that is not the right place so this is in short ma'am is trying to tell you and uh, what a wonderful session it was there were a lot of takeaways on how to inculcate life skills for parents how to choose the right schools and then again we spoke about many things in our rapid fire round also so i hope my dear viewers this session was engaging informative and with a lot of insights for you so thank you so much ma'am for your time with us it was truly an engaging conversation and my dear viewers do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already do like share and recommend us more more people whom you would like to see on our show thank you thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you my pleasure siva ma'am it was wonderful talking to you thank you Same so much ma and god bless